So if a gay man wants to marry another gay man or a woman wants to marry another woman or whatever, like who the fuck cares? What's up everybody, welcome to A Conversation with Colin. I'm Greg and this is my roommate Colin. Now sometimes Colin says crazy stuff. So every Tuesday and Thursday I reach into my random topic pile, pull one out, throw it at Colin, and we have a conversation about it. If you like that, like the video, then subscribe to us here and leave some comments below. Why not? We'll all have some fun. Colin, are you ready? Yes. Today's topic of conversation is Republicans. Oh. Now, this is, this is, this is you. <laughs> You're a Republican. You're a card-carrying Republican. I am. You're, you're very open about this. Mm -hmm. You're very political. What is going on with the Republican Party nowadays? Give what? me the stance. 2012, we're coming into an election. Mm -hmm. What's the state of the Republican Party? Take the pulpit. It's not very good. I mean, um, so in the 90s, in the mid-90s, there was something called um, PNAC. Um, and it was a policy for a new American century. Mm -hmm. And it was the origins of the neoconservative movement that took over the Republican Party towards the end of Clinton's administration and then basically the Bush administration. And what PNAC said was, um, you know, it was basically almost an imperialist mantra of um, American empire, basically, that we would kind of have um, many eggs in many baskets and kind of be policing the world and doing our thing or whatever, which you kind of saw play out during the Iraq War. Um, with people that were signatories on the on PNAC um, <clears throat> that were in the Bush administration, such as Donald Rumsfeld and Dick Cheney. Why I tell you that story is because the PNAC turned the Republican Party into something that it wasn't. And what we're dealing with now is are kind of the repercussions of PNAC and the failure of neoconservatism, which is a failure that I welcome because I think neoconservatism is scary. Um, and so in 2008, we kind of got our clocks clean and we kind of deserved it. It really started in 2006 with the midterm elections. Um, in which we lost control of the House and the Senate, um, and then it carried over into 2008 when Obama beat McCain, um, and then it kind of stopped in 2010 in the midterm elections in which the Republicans had a historic victory over the Democrats who were failing in every aspect mm -hmm. of governing. And now here we are a few weeks before um, the election now, and we have a Republican Party that somewhat mirrors more what I like, but still does a lot of stuff that I don't. Mm -hmm. So that's where we stand right now. Okay. So, a lot of stuff there about foreign policy and everything. Where does that boil down to hating the gays so much? Mm. Why do we have to hate the gays so much? We don't have to hate the gays. I mean, I, 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 I don't hate gay people. I don't hate anyone. Um, I, I, I'll say this. This is a complicated thing. I feel yeah. like this conversation is going to go on for a little while. No, it should. And, uh, I mean, I'm leading you somewhere with that, right? The fact that you don't hate gay people. The, I think Republicans, to a lot of people, is a dirty word nowadays yeah. because it's so veered off on this track of... Well, yeah, I'm Republican. That means I'm for a responsible government about money and then not having gay marriage ruin my world. Yeah, I mean, I think, where do I begin? You know, like, there are Republicans, I would say, I'm, I mean, this isn't scientific, this isn't mm -hmm. scientific data, but I would say a third of Republicans support gay marriage. Um, but there are different kinds of Republicans, just like there are different kinds of Democrats, and there are different kinds of conservatives, just like there are different kinds of liberals and moderates and centrists and stuff like that. And it depends on what issues are important to you. And just like any political party, the Republican Party is uh, um, an amalgamation of different sects of conservatives. And I'm a fiscal conservative. Okay. Um, I'm not a social conservative. And there are a lot of people like me. Now, people would kind of call me more of a libertarian-leaning Republican than I am. Um, but then there are social conservatives, religious conservatives, um, Midwestern mostly conservatives that um, religion pays, plays a big factor, uh, biblical laws at war plays a big role in their politics. Um, these are the people that are very vocal um, in Republican policy. And in order to win any election, just like the Democrats must take the crazies from Occupy with the moderate dinos from the center and like What's the, a dino? like Democrat in name only or a okay. rhino is Republican in name only. Gotcha, thank you. People that are somewhat somewhat in the middle where they're not really Republicans, they're not really Democrats. In other words, people from all both strata, different echelons, you put them together and you win elections. So to me, I've kind of put my eggs into the basket with the social conservatives in order to get the fiscal policy that I want. That's just the name of the game politically. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that I really feel that way. And unlike a lot of people that are Republicans or a lot of people that look at Republicans uh, and want to kind of spin into a third party in which like the Libertarians or the Tea Partiers um, kind of do their own thing, I think the way to get what we want, the way to get where we need to do, to where we need to be rather, is to change it from the inside. And that's what I'm trying to do. Because like any political party, they're malleable and they change over time somewhat. Yeah. Uh, not much, but somewhat. And if we can drive the social conservatism outside, like I tell you all the time, if we can drive social conservatism out of the party, Republicans win every 
single election from that point forward. This is what we talk about, right? Easy. I like to consider myself an independent. So like I watch the debates and I listen to it. And like Romney and the Republicans make a lot of great financial points and then we have to get hung up on abortion or something else. And it's, that's what, for me, I have to try to weigh where I want to go. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's hard, I think, for voters then to get a grasp. And especially as fucked up as the two-party system is. You know what I mean? That it, it seems like you have to pick a side and then you have to hate somebody else. That we get into this closed dialogue where we have in Wisconsin senators, you know, walking off the floor, or running, leaving the state. Yeah, that was that was just embarrassing. Yeah. Um, and they, they, you know, they paid obviously at the ballot box, even though they didn't think they would, which was quite funny. Um, to me, you know, I look at it two different ways. I think that there's a lot of hyperbole from the liberal side about Republicans mm -hmm. that they hate women, that they hate gay people. I don't think that that's really true. I don't think that like a normal Republican who is against gay marriage hates gay people. I don't think that that's true. Um, I think that that's true sometimes. Just sure. like there are probably some racists, some sexists, some bigots. I mean, like, sure, on both sides. Oh, yeah. Um, but I don't think that that's necessarily true. I, I implore people to, you know, I know people that are against gay marriage. I know people in my family that are against gay marriage. I know people, friends, that, you know, um, my friends' uh, family, some of them, that are against gay marriage. But they're not against gay people. They just look at, the, at marriage as something... Um, that's sacred between a man and a woman. And I respect that, but I don't agree with that yeah. also. I don't think the government should be in the business of even legislating on marriage. It doesn't make any sense. Um, the same thing with women's rights issues. I don't, Republicans are not against women. I mean, that's such a silly line. That's a, that's a talking point. Republicans are against paying for things like contraceptives for women. Um, they're against uh, funding Planned Parenthood when our government is spending too much money. Those things I can actually kind of relate to. I, I think these are silly talking points that really mean nothing at all. Um, so. You know, in that sense, I understand where people are coming from, but I also don't. With the gay marriage issue, I'm, I'm totally, I'm totally a Democrat as far as as far as uh, gay marriage is concerned. Although I think it's kind of funny too. I mean, Barack Obama was against gay marriage until three months ago, but now everyone's suddenly acting like Barack Obama is this great champion of gay marriage. It's totally fucking absurd. But regardless, um, I agree with you. The social issues need to be kind of cast out of the Republican Party. I agree with the other part of the Republican platform. I agree with the foreign policy of the Republican platform for the most part, not the neoconservative platform, but the, sh the but the platform that says. A powerful military is the best um, is the best diversion you can have, I guess, against uh, any conflict. That if you are so powerful that no one will take you on, I actually 100% agree with that and believe that that's true. Um, and so I agree with that. So I agree with the foreign policy. I agree with the fiscal aspect of things. Um, but I want a more libertarian slant towards people's rights um, brought into the Republican Party. And I'm intent, and there are millions of us that want to change the Republican Party from the inside. And we're hoping to do that. But right now, it's a slow process. It's a glacial process. Is but I'm very proud to be a Republican. Don't fucking mix it up. You know, and I think that that's... <laughs> no, no, I wasn't mixing it up, bro. I mean, like, <laughs> I, well, I think a lot of people do. They're like, you should be ashamed of... I'm, I'm not ashamed at all. Like, I... I I'm proud of the history of my party, and I'm mm -hmm. proud of what we've done in many respects um, as, a, as a party. Um, and just like any political party or any movement, there are scars and bad people in it and people that you don't want to associate with, but there are great people in the Republican Party. Um, I think that they mean well, and, and I think uh, you know as long as we can get these social issues, these backward social issues that hurt us with um, women, they hurt us with um, some minority groups, they hurt us with gay people. I think that um, I think that there are plenty of fiscally conservative gay people that would love to be Republicans, sure. but they feel like the party platform hates them. Do you I think get this it. is something that ages out of the party? I mean, is older people who aren't, you know, weren't raised in an environment where you could be openly gay or weren't raised around minority, you know, I mean, all these little things that people get hung up on, they turn into giant issues. As, you know, our generation comes up, is that what changes anything? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think that you know, I was a huge Ron Paul fan in 2008. I'm not really in the Ron Paul anymore because I kind of feel like he couldn't really articulate his stance well enough. No, he's to, really old now. Well, he is, but I also feel like he could have easily been the, the 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 standard bearer of the party if he was just able to articulate his position better, which he wasn't. Um, and that was kind of disappointing to me. But I think his movement, the libertarian movement, the Ron Paul Revolution, as it, as it's going to be called in the history books, and it's already called, um, has brought in a lot of young people into the party um, in their teens and their well now they're in their 20s and their 30s people that didn't pay attention to politics before people that understand sound fiscal policy <clears throat> um, but are against American adventurism and imperialism um, and are also for personal liberties um, because as far as I'm concerned things like um, you know moderate drugs should probably be legal prostitution should certainly be, certainly be legal yeah. um, you know things things that don't hurt anyone my, my whole mantra is if you're not hurting anyone you know, do unto others, you know what I mean? Um, to each his own, live and let live. And I really, really believe in that. So if a gay man wants to marry another gay man or a woman wants to marry another woman or whatever, like, who the fuck cares? If we have another family that can support a child and, you know, and raise children, even if they adopt them, 
um, or have to adopt them, that's great. That's important. That's good stuff. It doesn't mean you can't have it come from a loving family in which you know you come from a lesbian family or a family of gay men. That's that's fucking silly. Like I, I don't like that kind of stuff, um, and I want to ex exercise that from from the party platform. Mm -hmm. um, but it's frustrating that we have to kind of talk about these things all the time. They always come up. Um, and it is a problem. It's the Achilles heel of the party. Yeah. Um, and I hope it changes. But I, like I said, like the Republicans, you know, can fix this problem. And I hope that they do because, like I said, the, the history of the, the history of the party um, is a proud history. And we can continue. You know, Republicans. You know, here's one of the great myths, Greg. Yeah. Is that. Um, Republicans and Democrats switch places at some point. This is the great myth in American politics. They switch places. That, yeah, and it, Republicans are Democrats now, and Democrats are Republicans. This is this is one of the great myths that at some point oh, the party oh, shift oh, oh, the party okay, shifted, okay, okay. and somewhat they did, but somewhat they didn't. Um, and you know, as far as I'm concerned, our our party's history of Republicans freeing the slaves, Republicans fighting Jim, Jim Crow. Republicans fighting the wars that were being waged by Democrats like Woodrow Wilson and FDR, although World War II, of course, was pretty righteous. I mean, we should, we should have fought that war. Um, Democrats um, extending uh, travesties like the Great Depression, like FDR did, um, with all of his governmental policies. Um, the Democratic uh, Dixiecrat governors in the 40s, 50s, and 60s that were trying to segregate schools, uh, were, you know, those were Democrats. The Republicans were the ones that wanted to, to, uh, to uh, integrate the schools. Eisenhower, a Republican, sent the military in to do that. Um, you know, so, a, so, so there's the example, right, of them switching it, at least for popular opinion, right? Yeah, I mean, but, but it's all perception, you know what I mean? Because sure. I guess what I'm saying is, you know, Korea started by, a the Korean War started by a Democrat, you know? Mm -hmm. Ended by a Republican. Vietnam started by a Democrat. Ended by a Republican. Like you know, there's a proud history of being on the right side of history with the Republican Party, and they must continue this because we're going to be on the wrong side of history with what's going on with you know um, immigration, with uh, gay rights, um, and all of these things that are really important to people. And I understand why they're important. They're not as important as the economy and jobs and things of this nature. But I, so I guess what I'm saying is that you know I'm proud of my party. I'm proud of what we've done. Um, and I think we need to take hold of our history, remember where we've been, and the things we've fought for. That being a true conservative is fighting for equality. That being a true conservative is accepting that people are different, but accepting them into our society, into our family. Um, that being a Republican is leaving other people alone to make their own decisions. That is being a Republican, mm -hmm. you know? And ceding that to the other side is a fucking shame. And I hope that we are able to rectify that in the past because we are the party of Abraham Lincoln. You know, we are the party of Ulysses Grant. We're the party of Teddy Roosevelt. You know, um, we're the party of Eisenhower. We're the party of great men that did great things, and we shouldn't lose sight of that because we lost our way and were sent into the wilderness for a while during the Bush era, and we fucking deserved it. But now we have a chance again. Mm -hmm. So let's take it. Let's take advantage of it. Let's change the things that need to be changed. Let's keep most of the party platform intact, and I think we're going to be fine. I think the Republicans have a bright future. Okay. Interesting stuff. I hope they lose this election because I bet a pizza on it with you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, what do you think? Sound right. off in the comments below. Let us know. Subscribe, like, share the video with your friends. It means a lot to us. Uh, every Tuesday and Thursday, we will be back with another random topic of conversation from the pile. Until then, I hope you have a conversational day. I mean, I, I wouldn't use California as an example just because California is a complete fucking disaster.